everyone and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben and this is part 22, so let's get started. In today's session, we're going to delve a little bit deeper into the practical utilization of tools like Google Earth and Sentinel Hub to calculate the size of specific areas using satellite imagery alone. These are essential tools that can help you and aid investigations and research by providing this detailed geographical data. What I've tried to do is to break these tools down by using three specific case studies. So we'll go through and calculate, for example, the size of an area left behind by a wildfire so that that burn damage we will go through and have a look at change in infrastructure and the area impacted by that and we'll also go through and look at measuring the length of an airport the length of a runway or the size or area of a car park as well all of the case studies will be included in the description below as well as the tools so if you want to actually follow along and pause the video and try out some of these yourself while you're actually watching the video, you can simply open the links and follow through. So let's get started with the first one, which is using Google Earth Pro, which is the desktop version. So there's a link below in the description on where you can download that from. And it's a really useful tool for measuring area of satellite imagery, measuring length of specific objects or planes or ships or runways but also using that on past satellite imagery as well. And we're going to look at an example that we have here on the screen from Mandalay in Myanmar, where there's been a huge amount of homes and communities and buildings that have been destroyed in the east of that, that city of Mandalay. What you can see on the screen here are lots of little empty blocks and empty homes. If I click on the historical imagery, you can see what used to be there in April 2022 and then if I go forward to April 17 2023 it's no longer there and there's hundreds of homes that have essentially been cleared out from there so what we want to do with this is to make an original finding by identifying the size of the area where the where the destruction has occurred and this could be helpful if you're doing a research piece if you're doing an investigation or if you're working on say a news report or a feature investigation. For Google Earth Pro when you want to measure a specific area there's a little icon appropriately shaped like a ruler called show ruler. I started with the tool of Google Earth Pro because I feel like it's the most comprehensive for measurement and you have multiple options like line, path, polygon, circle, 3D path or 3D polygon as well. I'm going to start with the line path which is just something quick to show you and it allows you to measure in meters or degrees, inches, feet, kilometers, um, nautical miles if you want or, or many others. So I could perhaps measure the size of this side of the block here, this road, which is about 300 and one meters if I wanted to round it up to the nearest one. But what we want to do is actually measure this entire block area. And I'm going to do that by creating a polygon. So I'm going to orientate my map a little bit easier so I can simply create that polygon. And this allows me to start really clicking in certain areas. And I can also zoom in to make sure that I'm actually getting the appropriate section of the polygon where that destruction has occurred as well. So if I want to go around some houses like that and you can see the benefit of creating something like a polygon is that it allows you to be so accurate about your corners of where you're actually measuring this. So after selecting the area of my polygon you can see the options that I have here so I've got a perimeter that I can view so the perimeter which is the line around the outside or that that kind of border area with all those connected points is 7.94 kilometers almost 8 kilometers 
but my interest is the area um, and I could even do that in kind of in square meters or I could do that in square kilometers and so for this specific area now I'm able to say after viewing this that the area that had the most destruction was around about 1.77 or 1.8 square kilometers. And that's really useful because if we're trying to add more value to our research and be more precise with our findings, it really helps us answer that question when we're looking about what actually happened or what are we seeing on this satellite image here. Great, so that's covering Google Earth. In the next example, we're actually going to look at Russia's Siberia area and specifically some of the fires that were happening there in early 2023 around May. This is a platform called Sentinel Hub EO Browser. Sentinel Hub is a satellite imagery platform that allows you to view NASA satellite imagery, Sentinel satellite imagery and others as well. The reason why I always like to use Sentinel Hub as a satellite tool is because of the regularity of coverage of it. So it updates about every three to five days. For example, for this region, I have imagery from the first, the third, the fifth, the sixth uh, in, in around this area. So it really helps for me to view, for example, fires or infrastructure change or other patterns that I might be looking at for my research or investigations. This specific image is from May 8, 2023, and you can see that date up there. One of the drawbacks of Sentinel Hub is that you're not really using clear satellite imagery like what you would have seen on that previous Google Earth example where we can really zoom quite detailed in. So if I zoom quite closely into some of these images, you can see it is a little bit blurry. However, it makes up for that in the frequency of the image as well. And this is also really helpful if you're observing large changes like fires with smoke plumes or other things like that. And so, for example, this image caught on May 8, 2023, we can even see some of that fire line burning along there where there's been where where there is that large or significantly large fire creating that smoke plume over some of the communities that are there more east of where this fire is as well which is quite interesting before i get into the measurement the other quick interesting thing and you may have noticed this as well is the banding colors over here and this allows me to change or to filter the satellite image like you would an Instagram image with filters except this one brings out different characteristics for example I can use false color which shows up the burn marks really well I can use NDVI I could have a look for moisture index which as you can see really highlights areas of water uh, I can do false color which is specifically for urban but you can see it also has a bit of banding to bring out fires and there's many different options for banding as well as custom coding options for now i'm going to stick with true color just to stick with the normal version of what we usually view and i'm going to measure this area so on our screen it doesn't really appear that big but if you think about the size of the potential of this area it's actually quite large to measure an area on Sentinel Hub, we have the panel on the right over here. And again, aptly provided, we have a ruler measuring tool. This allows me to click on points on the screen. And similar to what we just did on Google Earth before, it allows me to draw an area box to see the kind of size of that scorched area on that day. Now, don't forget, this is a a specific satellite image so I'd want to make sure that I state that this is what is visible in the image on that day it might be the case that this fire might increase by five or ten times the size we don't know yet but we can say in this image that we are able to at least for this specific fire because there's many others around it as you can see but for this specific fire the burn area is 475 square kilometers that's massive 
And we wouldn't have known that had we not have actually been able to ma uh, measure that area or measure the, the, the area size of that. You can also do straight lines with that. So when you do more than two points, you'll get an area. If you only do two points, it allows you to measure a certain line. So say we can measure this line and that's 6.29 or 6.3 kilometers. So also really useful if you've identified new areas, new buildings or new runways or the site or the length of a ship or the width of an airplane, for example. Uh, and then you can also do the area as well like that. In the third and last example, I'm going to take you back to Google Earth now, but I'm actually going to take you to the Google Earth website version. It's available on your mobile phones or your browsers without actually having to download anything. And this is a really cool version of Google Earth that's very simple to use and very user friendly, less detailed than the downloadable version, but still has quite a lot of different functions. In this specific one, we're going to use this to actually measure, first of all, the length of the runway, and then second of all, one of these quite sizable car parks over here. For this runway, we can easily measure the tool by, again, the ruler icon. We can measure that in a straight line quite easily. So we'll go from here to here. This gives us a reading in meters of almost 3,600 meters. We can actually change that to kilometers. So the runway that we have here is about 3.6 kilometers. Great, so we've done that one and we can actually keep that on there and save it to a project so that next time we log in, we can keep that area. I'm going to remove that one and I'm actually going to have a look at a specific car park. So say I want to have a look at this row in the car park here. And I wanna measure that exact one where that paintwork is for the borders of this specific parking area. So I'm going to measure all the way around that. And that's given me an area of 702 square meters with a perimeter of 0.15 kilometers or, or 148 meters. And that's how we actually use the measuring tool to, to measure that. Great, so we've covered Google Earth Pro, the downloadable version where we measured the full area of a destroyed portion of homes in the eastern side of Myanmar's Mandalay. We had a look at the size of damage left behind by wildfires in Russia using Sentinel Hub. And we also had a look at using Google Earth on the desktop, which is also available on your phone as an application to measure both the length of a runway as well as the area and size of a car park. I hope you found this tutorial really useful and please let me know if you have any other measuring tools in the comments section below or if you're able to use it on a research piece, maybe please give us some ideas in the comments section below as you might inspire another researcher or investigator to use this tool in a creative way. Thanks so much for watching this session and I'll see you in the next one.